Hi everybody, I am back. Um, back with the black hair. I don't even, I don't even know if YouTube uh, even saw like my red hair, but I was red for a while. I loved it, I do miss it, but I really was like craving to go back to like my natural hair color. So here we are, let me know what you guys think. Um, did I go back too soon? I don't know, I've gotten many mixed emotions about getting rid of the red hair, but not the point of today's video. Today, we are going to talk about my favorite products from 2023. These are gonna be products that I used the most in 2023. Um, maybe not all of them are products that launched uh, last year necessarily, but a lot of them are. I'm really excited to talk about some of them because I really think this past year, like, I figured my makeup out. When you dye your hair as often as I do, um, you might know that you have to be a little bit cognizant about what colors you you can wear um, clothing-wise, makeup-wise, blush-wise. Um, it all really plays a part in, like, the final look. And specifically, I had red hair for the majority of the year in 2023. So I really, like, nailed it down and figured it out. I just dyed my hair back to black so I think I'm gonna be starting all over maybe taking the rest of this year to figure out this hair because I have not had black hair in a really long time so we'll figure that out we'll see how that goes see what new products launch this year but without further ado let's get into my favorites this is the favorite number one and will be for the rest of my life. If anyone knows me, you know I don't stay hydrated. My bloodstream is strictly Coke. It's kind of gonna go in order by like the way that I would normally do my makeup. Things first is sunscreen. I always start my makeup off with sunscreen first as my skin prep. So this is the Beauty of Joseon sunscreen. I believe this is a Korean skincare brand. Um, this sunscreen is literally the best. It is such a thin consistency. It is so significantly cheaper than um, something like Super Goop. It is my favorite thing and it hydrates me just enough and dries down to the point that it's not messing up my foundation. And it is an SPF 50, which that is like the goal in life for me. I will do an SPF 30 or 40 or whatever, but like 50 is where it's at. So I really love this one. Actually feels really good to put on if you have like normal to dry skin like me. Um, it doesn't really feel like a chore. It just feels like good skincare and it's sunscreen, which is like the best thing for anti-aging. There is unfortunately nowhere to pick this up that's like easily accessible. You actually have to go onto their website to buy it. Um, but I believe this is like a good like $18. So I usually pick up like two at a time and I'll be set for like a good while. So Beauty of Joseon, really good. Next is foundations. I love purchasing foundations for whatever reason. Like foundations, bronzers, and blushes are like my favorite thing to buy. This one is like a no-brainer. I talk about this all the time. This is the Luminous Silk Giorgio Armani Foundation. I love this foundation. It is such a natural satin finish. It's not super full coverage. It's not super dewy where you feel like if you set it with powder, it'll like grip onto it and do that like weird crinkly thing. This is just like the best foundation. It is very expensive. I will say that, but totally worth the money, especially if you're not using this foundation every single day. I definitely do not use this as like my daily foundation. This will last you a really long time. So if you are ever hesitant to pick it up, I would definitely wait until like the Sephora sale comes around and just pick yourself up a shade. I'm telling you, you will love it. Talk about a launch from this year. I think it was this year. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was last year. Anyway, this is the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. She's really good, guys. Like, this one lives up to the hype. There is so much makeup out there where TikTok completely blows it up for whatever reason it is. And I'm not kidding you. It's not worth it. There are so many things from TikTok or social media, whatever it is, 
they're not worth it. We hype them up so crazy bad. I fall into it every single time. I will go out and buy it. Nothing. I'm not impressed whatsoever. This one, she's really, really, really good. The finish of this is very similar to the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk, but I would give this a little more full coverage. This one has a lot more coverage to it, which I actually do prefer. Sometimes when it comes to this foundation, I find myself using a little bit more concealer than normal because I want a little bit of coverage, but I usually don't mind because this looks so good. Last but not least for foundation, this one's a little bit of a chi. I just bought this foundation maybe like a month ago, but I've been using it ever since I bought it and I do really like it. This is the Maybelline Superstay 24 Hour Skin Tint. It comes in a dropper and I think my favorite part about this is the fact that the shade 120 is like my perfect shade. I'm not expecting it to be as good as it is. It's called a skin tint, but it is like nowhere near skin tinty. It has a good amount of coverage on it. It dries down just enough where if you don't want to set it with powder and you just want to layer maybe some creams on top of it, um, you're totally free to do that. If foundation, I will always say don't ever sleep on drugstore foundation. You don't need to go to Sephora to find yourself something really good. Next, let's talk about concealers. I have two concealers that really stood out to me this year that I definitely used a ton. The first one is the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Luminous Matte Concealer. I love this. This concealer is really just like so different for what it is. Number one, it's called a Luminous Matte Concealer. But that is like the perfect way to describe it. The coverage that it has is also my favorite. I am not a girl that likes light coverage concealer. I can do light coverage foundation easily, but when it comes to concealer, I want something with a lot of pigment and a lot of coverage to it. So this is just perfect. It's nothing like a shape tape where it's so much coverage that it dries down like super crinkly or anything it dries down in like the perfect luminosity but it's not like super wet and dewy it's really just like so good i i don't know how else to describe it i have two shades here i have coconut flakes and honey for when i want to um brighten my under eyes up just a little bit I really really played a lot with these this year i really enjoyed them next for concealer is of course the house labs concealer i have been using this concealer specifically to wear to work so i usually don't do makeup to go to work but on days that i do when i wake up early enough to actually do my makeup um i will actually just take this I just kind of run it under my eyes, around my nose where I'm a little red, just a little on my chin and a little bit on my forehead. I'll blend it all out and it looks really good. Now you may ask me, why wouldn't you just use the foundation to do that? And the answer to that is this is just faster and easier for me. And it almost has a little bit more radiance and it's a little bit more of a thicker consistency than the foundation itself. So I really love this um, concealer. I have the shade 21 light medium neutral. It's like perfect shade for me and I really enjoy it. And I actually always get compliments on my makeup when I'm just using this concealer as a base. Let's talk powders next. The powder that I always use and I will always go back to, I've been using it for years, a Derma Blend Professional Loose Setting Powder. A lot of people say that they have had issues with flashback on this. I never have and I always take flash photography pictures like when I post on Instagram and stuff. I never have that issue with this. Um, but I'm not talking about her just because she is just like my basic girl. Like she works every single time for me, no matter what foundation or concealer that I'm wearing and I'm setting. She's really good. I've talked about her before. Boring, whatever. One that stood out to me this year is the good old viral Prism Libre Givenchy powder. So this is the powder that has like the four, like the four different colors on it. And I have the shade number three. So this is like the pink powder one. I have always wanted a pink powder, but 
a lot of the ones that I had seen um, advertised or online, like, like the Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom Powder, almost just always looked like too pink. and almost looked like I was just putting like blush under my eyes. I love the pale pinkness of this powder. The different colors on it, I don't really know if it matters. I don't know if it's just like an advertisement technique, but literally what I do is I just like dump it in the cap. I kind of take this and like shake it around and try to mix it as best as I can. And I set it with a little setting puff like this and it always looks so flawless. I'm actually wearing this powder right now. I usually save this for um, a little bit more of a special occasion, but I decided to wear it today. So the best thing about this powder is it has almost a sheen to it. Um, it's not glittery by any means, but it's definitely not full blown matte. And I think that's what makes this powder so pretty on the skin. The way that I always use loose powders is I'll dip my little, um, blender in here into the cap and then I'll always run it on the back of my hand to kind of just spread it out and then I'll set wherever I'm setting my face. And it always just gives such a poreless, smooth not flat look to my skin and that's literally why I love it so much. It's a plus with the shade number three that I get a little bit of a brightening effect as well. So I highly recommend this one, especially for a luxury makeup item. This is one of the few out there that is totally, totally worth it. If fragrance does bother you, doesn't bother me really at all. This does have a little bit more of like a grandma powdery scent to it, which is totally not necessary, but it is there. But if that doesn't bother you, then like, she's it. All right, so now is bronzers. Like I said in the beginning, bronzer is like one of my favorite things to buy. So I have four to talk about, but really I wanted two of them to be like the star of the show. So the first one that I'm just gonna get out of the way real quick, I have been using this bronzer for literal years. Um, it, it, it'll just always be my favorite. It is the perfect warm summertime bronzer. This is the Sun Stalker Private Island Bronzer by Fenty Beauty. This shade specifically for me is just like the perfect warmth in the summer and it just makes for such a good bronzer. But I have been using this one forever, literally since like she launched Fenty Beauty. So that one's like an oldie but a goodie for me. Next one that is also really basic, and I can't remember if I got this one this year or not, but I just feel like I've been using it for so long. It's the Hourglass Radiant Bronze Light Bronzer. This one's also a really good one. It's not as warm as the Fenty Beauty. They have two shades. This one's the darker one, um, but it's very, very close, and it has just like a beautiful sheen, just like any of their other ambient light powders do. And it's not like an ugly sheen for a bronzer. It actually just lays on the skin so smoothly, just like all of these powders do. Um, I really love to use this one when I have a um, self tan and I kind of just want more of like a glowy look to my cheeks. So she really good. Anything Hourglass makes is really up to par. Two star of the shows that I'm talking about is first this Patrick Ta She's Bronze Cream Contour and Bronzer Duo. This guy. We've seen it everywhere. Patrick Ta is all over the place. Mine is super gross and dirty. Why are all of them like this packaging? Like I don't do, everything of mine looks disgusting, whatever. It's a full proof bronzer that you cannot mess up. Both the cream and the powder are honestly stunning. I love the shade that I got. Powdered side of this bronzer is almost on the drier side, but I really don't mind that because it gives you wiggle room to play with on your cheeks. It's not like one of those products where you like barely have to tap and then barely have to touch your skin and then any more than that you'll look like a clown. This one you can really build and it looks so good. I love using the cream also um, really when I'm not doing any powder at all. It doesn't stay super dewy where it feels like it's gonna slide but dewy enough where you have a really nice glow. All right next is blushes. We love blush. The whole world loves blush right now and Literally, what I'm going to talk about is the whole reason why I wanted to make this video and really the whole reason that I feel like my makeup just looked so good this year. The Double Take 
cream and powder blushes. I own, I was gonna say, I know I own four of them. I own four different shades. These blushes are like stunning. I waited so long to try these because I just didn't think there were gonna be anything special. I put up a picture here of Patrick Ta when he did Alex Earl's makeup. I was obsessed with the blush that he had on her. So he posted that it was the shade She's So LA and I would stare at it on Sephora and I was like, this almost looks like a bronzer. Like I cannot imagine this shade being pretty on the cheeks. I'll show it to you how it's advertised on Sephora and it just doesn't look like anything special. There's nothing peachy about it. There's nothing like pink about it. There's there's nothing, it looks like a bronzer in my opinion. When I started playing with this color, specifically when I had my red hair and even so now I've worn it with my black hair, this color meshes so well with whatever bronzer you have on. It is like the most natural, stunning shade. It's so different. It's not pink. It's not peachy coral. It's nothing like bright pink that's in right now. This is like the perfect it girl natural shade in my opinion. So she saw a leg. It's like a golden golden star for me okay, with all of the other shades that I have. Just the formula in general is so stunning. I love to use it in the way that Patrick Ta recommends it, which can be a little scary. It's putting the powder on first and then layering the cream over top. But when I tell you that gives you the like dewiest cheeks in the world, it just looks so good. And something with this formula, the cream doesn't mess up your powders underneath at all. The creams though, you have to be very careful because they are very pigmented and so are the powders themselves as well. Um, you really want to use a light hand, but I don't think I'm ever gonna stop using these. These are really, really so good. You can see I made a big dent in this shade here. This is the shade She's Blushing. It's very similar to She's So LA, but it's a little bit more pink. So what I love to do is I actually love to use these together. Also have the shades She's That Girl and She's A Doll. These I think are gonna be like my best friends. Um, when I have this black hair. It's actually what I'm wearing today. I believe I'm wearing She's That Girl right now. I have the powder underneath and the cream on top. I completely forgot to talk about this bronzer. Let me just go into this real quick. I can't believe I forgot to talk about this because this is something that I've used literally all the time. And I'm so surprised because it's not even marketed as a bronzer. It it is marketed as a cream eyeshadow. This is the shade Capulet by, I believe this is Halsey's brand, About Face. I love to use this shade as a bronzer. Again, when I go to work, I'll put on my House Labs concealer, swipe this on my cheeks as a bronzer, and I'll blend it right out. And because this is a shadow, it has the ability to actually dry down on its own without powder, making it like the perfect thing to use when you're trying to get ready quick. You don't have to worry about cream and then setting it with powder. You don't have to worry about just going right in with a powdered bronzer where it might look a little bit patchy on top of bare skin. This is really just like the perfect shade if you have skin, um, a skin tone similar to mine it gives you enough time to blend it but once it dries down it does not move as you see once it's dry down it literally doesn't bud it is really like the best hack that I've found I use this all the time there was so much left in here you only need a little bit to do your entire face all about face the shade Capulet she's stunning she's cheap she's like $16 so I don't really have a favorite mascara, nor do I have like a favorite eyebrow pencil. But what I can talk about is lip products. I have so many lip products. Um, you would think I would have like 13 pairs of lips by this point. I almost wish I did so that I at least can go through the stuff that I buy. <laughs> so because I own a lot of lip products, I usually buy within the same tones. I buy a lot of nudes, a lot of pinky nudes, and then kind of leaning a little bit towards like a darker, deeper brown, but nothing too dark because I'm not 
into that. So I have a lot of things that look very similar. So I'm very, sometimes I'm not so mindful of what I'm picking up because I know usually everything will work together just fine. But when I really want like the lip, and again, like I'm going out, I'm going to see people, I'm going to take a picture or whatever. And I want like the lip that's going to make me look good. Okay. I finally bit the bullet and I bought freaking Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. She's good. She's real cute. She's a good shade. I have her on right now. I don't have much to say about this because everyone else knows about this. And how good it was but me so there's that for lip liner i love lip liners a lip pencil that i do love and i will highly recommend and i have worn a million times if you can see the size of the pencil is the nyx lip pencil in the shade nude beige she's little i have another one can't find it it's somewhere in my drawers but he is like the shade that you wear when you almost just want to like do a lip contour and you just kind of want to throw some gloss on on top. She is like the perfect nude muted brown with a little bit of pink. I'm not kidding when I tell you like I was like when I bought this shade, I was like, oh, this is the shade that like girls use to like make their lips look bigger and like th like this is it. Like this is like the it girl shade where they just like throw some on and like make their cupid's bow look cute and then like a little bit of gloss and it's like do they have lip liner on is this like or they just look like that i don't care they look so good like this is the shade i am like so surprised because i would have never picked up a shade like this that is this like weird muted brown but it really works and for the price of nyx like i was like fuck it let me just try it and i really like it and i bought in two more since love her She's really good. I'm going to talk about a lip liner that is always, always in my makeup kit. It is the Milani Lip Statement in the shade number three in Nude. I use this all the time on my clients. I use it on myself. It is just like the perfect pink nude that goes well with literally any lipstick. I almost feel like this is like pillow talk in... Oh my God, stop it. This is literally pillow talk in a lip liner. You can get it at Ulta, you can get it at Walmart. It's so freaking cheap. Contours the lips just fine, it wears all day. The proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding. And another Patrick Ta product. This, this is the Patrick Ta Major Volume Plumping Lip Gloss. This is in the shade Superficial. It is almost like a beige brownie gloss. It's literally what I'm wearing right now. It has the perfect doe foot on it. Picks up just the right amount of product. Has a little bit of that like tingly sensation, but nothing like lip injection, like Too Faced lip injection, um, where it's like super strong and it like, if it gets in your throat, it like burns. It's nothing like that. Um, I've been using this one a lot and I really, really like it. Guys, we are just about done. Just two more things to talk about. Setting and spray, the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless setting spray is such a good one i use this in my makeup kit as well i have it for myself this is a perfect setting spray if you really do not want your makeup to budge what sold me on this one specifically was literally being at sephora swatching a whole bunch of glitter eyeshadows on my hand as i do and then spraying the tester on my hand and by the time i walked out of sephora i was like really trying to scrub it and it literally didn't move like everything was absolutely set in place if you want something that's gonna last you a really long time it's not gonna make your makeup move charlotte tilbury setting spray last my most used favorite eyeshadow palette this year is the patrick ta major dimensions number three palette this is the all matte palette that he came out with it's just so satisfying and stunning to even look at but i've realized i love a good matte look it's not something that i do often i don't really wear much eyeshadow anymore either but when i do i'm dipping into this it's just so easy to have all the colors all in one i have a million eyeshadow palettes that probably have all these tones in it 
but it's just it's just satisfying to have when they're all in the same component this would be perfect to carry in your makeup kit i definitely think i'm going to pick one up for mine i have the first patrick top palette in my um makeup kit and the girls just absolutely love when i use it on them oh my god i literally talking about matte eyeshadows com i completely forgot about this product i have to talk about it really quick it is the moon dust urban decay shadow in the shade space cowboy this i always get asked what's on my eyes every single time i use this it is one of those shadows that just gives you a little bit of glimmer on your eye if you just pat it on i'll literally throw some on right now to show you it just gives you such a pretty like twinkle to the eye you can layer it up as much as you want or as little as you want and it just always looks so good this is literally what i'll do when i wear it is just throw something in the crease really quick and then with my finger i'll just tap it out and it just gives you like a cute little shimmer moment it looks really good it catches the light perfectly in the shade space cowboy really beautiful and that's about it i'm so happy that i finally got to filming this video i really wanted to do it um Really, in my opinion, everything that's sitting in front of me is like the best of the best for me right now. God knows what's going to come out in 2024. Of course, I cannot wait and I will be buying whatever is on trend and whatever anyone tells me is good. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for also commenting and saying that you wanted this video to be put up. Um, I always get really hesitant about filming content because I'm always like, I don't even know if people care. I care, but... It doesn't mean everyone else does so i really appreciate your guys's dms into pushing me to make this because it definitely was something that i really wanted to do so yeah that's about it everybody thank you guys so much for watching um lance and i will actually probably be posting a vlog here pretty soon in a couple weeks so stay tuned for that if you care <laughs> and we will see you in the next one bye